Welcome back. Again, we're joined by Tom Morazzo, who's going over his book and the contents of his book, The People's Emergency Act. Tom, again, you were you ended up becoming very involved with the convoy. You were sort of like the ad hoc spokesperson by the end of it. Um, we were just talking about some of the frightening images that so many of us saw, but really there were there were violent actions taken uh, once the Emergency Act was invoked and the police cracked down. Mm -hmm. And immediately people started dispersing and... Yeah, and they set up this, uh, what they called the red zone, basically. They just drew a line on the map in the downtown. And anybody who was found inside the red zone was now susceptible to arrest. And they had scooped up quite a number of Canadians. And in some cases, which was really disturbing, is that they would put them all in a lineup, process them, put them in a car and then drive them, because this is winter time, drive them 20 kilometers outside the city limits and drop them off on the side of a country road. Just in the middle of nowhere? In the middle of nowhere. And they did have a collection point. I think it was a uh, Ottawa police uh, compound that they had, but it had no shelter, no phone, nothing. It was just a, a parking lot that they had. And they were just dropping people off out in the country at this location. They didn't even know where they were. And so... What's also very interesting about a lot of the people that were arrested, uh, many of the charges have since then been dropped. Mm. The reason being is because when they processed all those people, they actually denied them access to legal counsel. Wow. So a lot of the charges have now been dropped for some, but for others, they haven't been so lucky. So for example, uh, Harold Jonker, who's in Niagara region, 15 months after the convoy ended, the Ottawa police have now decided that they want to press the same charges against Harold that they did with Chris and Tamara. Right. And so, you know, there's this, uh, you know, very difficult sort of logic that the police seem to be exhibiting again in terms of who they're charging and who they're not charging uh, and when and for what. I mean, mischief, we're, we're really looking at the longest trial in Canadian history on mischief charges for Chris and Tamara. Right, and that's Tamara Lich, Chris Barber. Barber, yes. Because I was going to ask you, like, where do a lot of these court cases sit? A lot of mm -hmm. us have forgotten. It's been two years. People move on and yeah. they forget what yeah. happened. But a lot of people are clearly still being prosecuted. Yes, and there's four men that have been in remand, which is not jail. It's remand, which is in a lot of cases worse than jail since the Coots blockade. So the four of them have been in remand and one of what, them... What is remand? So remand is basically you're arrested, you're taken into custody, uh, you're not released on bail, but you have to go through your trial, be convicted, and then sent to prison. So it's, it's kind like of an inter... Episode. It's holding. Oh. It's holding. And a lot of... So if you're, if you're in remand and you are sentenced, the remand is so bad they usually give you two... One day of remand equals two days in jail. Oh, wow. And they've had two men over seven... Four men over 700 days in remand since the Coots blockade, and they've been denied bail. Wow. So... So did the convoy achieve what it set out to do? With the I, COEC, the report after the commission, because it was mandated that there had to be a commission. Yes. Once you invoke the Emergencies Act, a mm -hmm. commission has to happen within six months. Um, yeah. I, I struggle with that question. And, you know, from the, let's say, the 30,000-foot view of this, I would say it was a success in the terms that... There were what we knew about at the time of the convoy, the Ottawa convoy inspired 27 other countries to protest against the mandates of their countries. We're looking at the Dutch farmers last year. There's, you know, they were inspired by what Canada did. If you look at Germany right now, you look at um, France, you know, a lot of people sort of took their inspiration or their lead from what Canada did at the, at the convoy. So I would say globally, it, yes, it was very successful. I struggle to, to find the real success in Canada because what happened was the government brought the full weight of law enforcement and the court system against Canadians, which is something they don't do when foreign um, immigrants come to this Canada and they protest for a foreign cause and they wave a foreign country's flag or BLM as an example, we see what's happening with Antifa. Or the Hamas-Israel thing. Exactly. We don't see law enforcement or the court system targeting people for those causes, but we're seeing the full force of law enforcement in the court system come after Canadians mm. and actually say that the Canadian flag is somehow triggering. So I'm caught somewhere between, was it successful? Did it wake up the world? Yes. But did it wake up Canada? I'm not so sure. 
Okay, I'm Tom, so it's sure. been great to have you. For those interested, they can get your book on Amazon. Yes, you can get it on Amazon or on the veteransforfreedom.ca website.